Hi everyone. Today in this video we will see the journey of glucose and various glucose transporters involved in the movement of the glucose across the body. Whenever glucose is available for absorption, the glucose should be absorbed through the GI tract. And once the glucose is available in the systemic circulation, it can be taken into the liver, otherwise it can be taken by the muscle cells. Or glucose can also be taken into the adipose tissue. In this way, glucose can be distributed into the various tissues. But here, one of the important thing is that whenever the glucose is going to be taken by the liver, as well as in the muscle cells, as well as in the adipose tissue, it requires we have the transporters. So the distribution of the glucose is not a simple diffusion and it requires we have the transporters in order to be distributed into the various organs. So glucose needs transporters even for absorption as well as distribution. So today in this video, we will discuss about the glucose transporters and what are the different types by which the glucose is absorbed and distributed within the body. Glucose transporters. Glucose transporters can be classified into two types. One is the GLUT GLUT, which is nothing but the glucose transporters. So here GLU indicates the glucose and T indicates the transporters. Similarly, another type of transporters are the SGLT where S indicates the sodium, so sodium glucose transporters. We have the different types of glucose transporters like the GLUT1 to 14 and SGLT can be classified from the SGLT1 to 6. In this way, we have the different types of glucose transporters. Now, let us see what is the role of these glucose transporters in the absorption and distribution of the glucose in the body. Transport of the glucose. Let us discuss the transport of the glucose into the various phases. First one is the absorption through the intestine. Second one is the uptake into the beta cells because the pancreatic beta cells are very important for the release of the insulin, which is again signaled by the glucose. Third one is the uptake into the liver and fourth one is the uptake into the other cells. So let us go one by one. First one is the absorption through the intestine. At the intestinal epithelial cells, the microvilli are present and here if the glucose is ready for absorption and here glucose has to travel across the two membranes the first membrane where the microvilli is present is the apical membrane and the second membrane where it is connected with the systemic circulation is the basolateral membrane so glucose cannot be transported at the apical membrane as well as the glucose cannot be transported across the basolateral membrane directly so it needs we have the transporters for the movement across the apical membrane as well as the basolateral membrane. So at the apical membrane, we can observe few of the receptors which we call the SGLT, sodium glucose transporters. So these transporters require the sodium in order to transport the glucose uh, across the membrane. So sodium ions are very important for the glucose absorption. So here two molecules of the sodium and one molecule of the glucose can be transported through the SGLT, sodium glucose transporters. Now the potassium which is present in the systemic circulation can be exchanged with the sodium so that the sodium can be transported across the basolateral membrane. So for this one of the pump is present that is a sodium potassium ATPase pump. So potassium is coming inside and sodium is going outside so that the sodium can be absorbed. But what about the glucose? Glucose cannot be absorbed directly from the basolateral membrane so it requires few of the transporters. Here the important transporters are the GLUT2 transporters, the glucose transporter 2. Through this, the glucose can be absorbed into the systemic circulation. Now the glucose is present in the systemic circulation. In this way, for absorption of the glucose, two types of transporters are required at the apical membrane, SGLT, and at the basolateral membrane, GLUT, GLUT2 receptors are required. Now let us see the uptake of the glucose into the pancreatic beta cells. Glucose is one of the signal for the release of the insulin from the pancreatic beta cells. Whenever glucose levels are going to be increased within the systemic circulation, the glucose can enter into the beta cells which can stimulate the release of the insulin into the systemic circulation. In this way, the glucose can release the insulin. Now this insulin can act on the glucose so that it can control the glucose levels within the serum. So insulin can promote the uptake of the glucose into the various cells so glucose can be taken into the cells. In this way, the glucose is required for the insulin release as an insulin is required for the glucose uptake. So for entry of the glucose into the beta cells as well as for entry of the glucose into the other cells, 
again the glucose transporters are required first of all let us see how this glucose is going to enter into the beta cells so suppose this is a pancreatic beta cells then the glucose can be entered into this pancreatic beta cells through the one of the receptors the GLUT2 receptors these are the same receptors which are responsible for the absorption of the glucose at the basolateral membrane at the intestine now the glucose can be absorbed into the pancreas so glucose is present within the pancreatic beta cells this glucose can undergo the metabolism like the glycolysis so it can release the ATP molecules these ATP molecules can then block one of the important ion channels these are the potassium channels these potassium channels are outgoing potassium channels so they are responsible for the repolarization of the pancreatic islets but this ATP which is released from the glucose can inhibit this potassium channels thereby this potassium channel activity is going to be blocked when the potassium is not going outside the calcium channel activity is going to be increased so calcium can enter into the pancreatic beta cells which produce the depolarization this depolarization can promote the exocytes of the vesicles which are filled with the insulin so whenever the calcium levels are increased it results in the exocytosis and release of the insulin in this way the glucose can release the insulin by blocking the atp sense to potassium channels but for this the glucose should enter into the pancreatic beta cells for which the glut2 receptors are required now let us see how this insulin acts on the other cells to increase the glucose uptake at various cells the insulin receptors are present these insulin receptors are tyrosine kinase linked receptors so whenever this insulin is released from the pancreatic beta cells then this insulin can act on the insulin receptors present on the other cells then it results in the activation of the kinase cascade insulin can act by many of the ways and one of the important action is to increase the glucose uptake for which it is going to synthesize the glucose transporters so it can promote few of these pathways like the pi3 and akt pathways which promotes the gene transcription and protein synthesis so one of the proteins that are going to be synthesized are the glut4 receptors these glut4 receptors are present as the polymers and stored in the vesicles and these vesicles can be undergo the exocytosis and they can release the glut4 receptors in this way glut4 receptors are going to be expressed on the cell membrane which are responsible for the absorption of the glucose now let us see the uptake into the liver so suppose these are liver cells the glucose should enter into the liver cells and now which type of receptors are required so on the liver glut2 receptors are present through which the glucose can be absorbed into the liver so glucose can be transported into the liver cells and once the glucose is going to enter into the liver cells it can be converted into glucose 6 phosphate by the one of the important enzyme hexokinase and this glucose 6 phosphate can be then converted into glycogen which is the storage form of the glucose otherwise it can be promoted into the fatty acid synthesis and triglycerides so it can be converted to vldl so this vldl can be released from the hepatic cells in this way the glucose is going to be absorbed into the liver cells where it can be stored as a glycogen or otherwise it can be converted to triglycerides and for the absorption of the glucose here glut2 receptors are required now let us the uptake into the other cells other cells include the muscle and adipose tissue so here other cells just like the muscle and adipose tissue again the insulin can promote the glucose uptake so here how this glucose is going to be absorbed so on these cells the again the glucose transporters are present but this time these are the glut4 receptors so these are different from the liver cells liver cells are having glut2 receptors but the muscle and adipose tissue are expressed with the glut4 receptors now the glucose enters into these cells through the glut4 receptors and this glucose can be converted into glucose 6-phosphate by the hexokinase just like in the liver cells where this glucose 6-phosphate is then going to be converted into glycogen so this happens in the muscle cells where the muscle is going to store the glucose in the form of glycogen just like the liver cells but in the adipose tissue the glucose can be converted into since of the glycerol this glycerol is important for the triglyceride synthesis so glucose is converted to glycerol in the fatty tissues like the adipose tissue in this way glucose is going to be taken into the muscle cells and adipose tissue through the glut4 receptors now let us see the distribution of the glut2 that is a glucose transporters 
Already we have discussed that glucose transporters can be classified into GLUT1 to 14. So we will discuss about the important transporters. First one is a GLUT1. GLUT1 is one of a universal transporter. It is present in many of the cells like the brain cells, adipose tissue, testes, prostate. In many of the cells, the GLUT1 receptors are present. And these receptors are having the high capacity for transport of the glucose. And GLUT2 receptors are present which are specific to the glucose. So these receptors are present in the liver. Already we have seen the liver is expressed with the GLUT2 receptors. And they are also present in the kidney, pancreatic islets as well as in the small intestine. We have already discussed that the absorption of the glucose into the intestine, pancreatic beta cells, liver is mediated through the GLUT2 receptors. Similarly, GLUT3 receptors are mainly present in the brain that is the central neurons, placenta and testes. GLUT4 receptors are mainly present in the skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle and adipose tissue. And again, we have seen that insulin mediated uptake of the glucose into the skeletal muscle and adipose tissue is through the GLUT4 receptors. Similarly, we have so many other types of glut glucose transporters which are distributed into the other tissues like the brain, placenta, testis and so many are going to be distributed like GLUT5 to GLUT14. Now, let us see the distribution of the SGLT and what are the important SGLT transporters. SGLT1 and 2 are going to be involved in the transport of the glucose at the heart as well as kidney and small intestine. SGLT3 is important at the liver, kidney, skeletal muscle and small intestine. You can see that SGLT3 is just like the GLUT2. It is present on the various organs like liver, skeletal muscle, kidney and small intestine. But these SGLT transporters require the sodium along with the glucose. And SGLT4 and 5 are not transporting the glucose. They are going to transport the other molecules like the thyroid and uh, inositol. So that's about the transport of the glucose across the different membranes. For the transport of the glucose, we need the two important uh, transporters like the glucose transporters commonly denoted as GLUT and sodium glucose transporters denoted as SGLT. The important glucose transporters are the GLUT2 and GLUT4. GLUT2 is present in the liver cells, small intestine, kidney and pancreas. GLUT4 uh, are mainly present on the skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle and adipose tissue. SGLT also plays important role in the transport of the glucose. And particularly SGLT1 and 2 are present on the heart, kidney and small intestine. Whereas SGLT3 is present in the liver, skeletal muscle intestine and kidney so that's about the glucose transporters hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video